Welcome, friends of the Greasy Shop Rig, to another edition of Over the Bench. This time around, we're going to look at the Husqvarna 326 LS string trimmer. The customer complaint was that it hadn't run in many years, and he put some fuel in it and couldn't get it started. Well, the week prior to this video, I took a look in the cylinder and everything was clean. Took a look in the fuel tank and took a sniff and uh, pretty much smelled like a skunk's butthole in there. So we decided to swap the carb out, replace the filter, the lines, the primer bulb, and just do a fuel system overhaul on it. First thing I want to do is make sure that, in fact, there is no fuel in the tank the tank is clean. Then I'm going to back out the screws that hold the carburetor on. Right there I just removed the cable for the throttle linkage. And bang, the carb's out. Pretty simple. We're going to unhook the fuel line that comes from the filter. And then the other line is just the return to the tank and that can stay on the carb. We're going to replace the line anyway. Now what am I looking for here? My handy dandy fishing tool. We'll pull the fuel filter out of the tank. And uh, by golly it does look like a skunk wiped his butt with that thing. She's pretty rough. So we're just going to, easiest way is just snip the line and then pull the old line out. The grommets in the tank aren't terrible and I didn't have new ones to put in there. In the end, it turns out they didn't leak anyway, so I was all right. Yahtzee. So, you take a primer bulb and uh, get that ready. And then uh, we're going to... I'm talking faster than the video here. Let me back up. How many bags does it take to ship a carburetor? Two bags, a box, and another bag. All right. Now, well, better be clean. Just quick match them up. They're not identical, but that one is the replacement carb for this unit. We're going to swap that blue choke lever off the old carburetor and put it on the new one. It just snaps in place. Set that off the side for right now. Pull out the old fuel line out of the tank. And pop the old primer bulb off. There's just a couple of tabs on those primer bulbs that snap them into place. Usually you just get one tab to move and you can push the whole thing out. So there I'm just going to cut a new line for the tank return. I'll drop it down through the grommet in the tank. And then I'm going to hook it to the primer bulb. Now there's two size lines on the primer bulb. A um, long and a short nipple on there. And the return always goes on the long one. And if you think about the extra pressure that's in uh, when you're pumping fuel out of the primer, you know, that long length kind of holds the line on better. I don't know how else better to explain it, but uh, that's how I remember. So now it looks like I'm fishing around for something again. What are we looking for? There's no gasket. Tripes! So I'm going to have to go in the parts room and grab a gasket. Grab some fuel line while I was in there and we're going to fish it through the ground in the tank and pull it through now. We'll slip a new fuel filter on. And I'd like to leave just enough line, and maybe I have too much here. 
but just enough so that the filter will land the tank decent and but you can still fish the filter back out if you want to and not have to struggle to replace the filter so we've got our new carburetor our new gasket we're just going to measure the length of this line that the filter is on and push it onto the carburetor pretty simple stuff we'll gather up our bolts get the bolt through the filter holder then through the carburetor and then through the gasket uh, but not just it doesn't just push through the gasket in this case you kinda gotta thread the bolt through a little bit right there and which is good because that holds the gasket in place better and now once the whole thing is one unit you can just run the screws home Now I've said it in past videos, I don't like to torque carburetors down with the power tool. I'm using a T25 bit here on a 4mm bolt. And I've been getting away with this for a long time, but gripes! Uh, that just, that run just ended. And my snap-on T25 is gonna have to get exchanged. So we use the actual correct tool for the job on this one and works just fine. Hook our throttle linkage back up right here. Simple stuff, it's just a dog leg end that goes into the end of the shaft on the carburetor. And I'm checking the function right now of the throttle mechanism. This fuel line is also pulling fuel through the carburetor so the one under the carb is pulling it up out of the tank this one's pulling it through the carburetor to the primer bulb and then there's a return line back to the tank so a second glance and that fuel line that's under the carburetor is just a little too much line bunched up between the carb and the tank so I just gotta pull a little bit through it was actually hitting the linkage there now if you've been watching this for the last couple of minutes there's been a a visual a visual problem here uh, later in this video you're gonna see I ran into a problem and now that I'm editing the video I can see the problem uh, but I didn't see it while I was doing the repair so if you're good, maybe you can pick up on what what is wrong right now. I don't know why I pulled that spark plug out. I had done that a week ago. But we're we're good there. I'm gonna take a look at our air filter. It looks pretty good. I probably cleaned it last week. fish some things around here and get this jigsaw put back together hey look at that I even remember the screw that goes over that exhaust guard Drop our foam filter in there. And now, if you look at this cover, watch how I put this on here. I lay the cover on top, and then I spin the knob. All right, I think you're gonna get another chance in this video to see this. And there's a reason I do it that way. We'll talk about it later. When 
I said spin the knob, uh, I'm, what I'm saying is I don't put downward pressure on that knob while I'm turning it to get the thread started. So we got our go go juice in there, and we're going to prime it up. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20. Come on, what is going on here? It is not priming. It's a brand new carb, brand new line, brand new filter. Well, I decided to take another look at the primer. You know, I still have not figured this thing out. I don't know why I didn't see it. I mean, I, I know what the problem is in my head, but I'm not sure why. Now look at the fuel flow in here. It's going back and forth with the primer bulb. Each line should only flow one direction, but it was going back and forth in that line. And, well, you can see what happened there. She was flooded pretty bad. So why was it doing that? Have you figured it out yet? We're going to pop that primer bulb out of there and take another look at it. Just throw them on there, it don't matter where they go. Yeah. Two, three, it's already priming at three pumps. So let's take a closer look here. Every time I press the bulb, the fuel is going to only flow one direction in each line. That's the way it's supposed to work. I don't know why I didn't notice it earlier, but take a look at this primer bulb. There's a little check valve that lives in there. It's the orange piece. Look at it. It ain't gonna work. Not sure why I didn't see that earlier, but it is what it is. So we're gonna put it back together again. Drop our air filter in. So there's a nut right there inside the cover. And you don't want to push that knob down and accidentally push that nut out of its holder. People do it all the time. That's all we got on this one. Thanks for watching. Later.